These are seven of the craziest betting coups that actually happened, leaving the bookmakers in despair. The finer details are what are allowed the people behind these to make millions of pounds very quickly. So starting with the first one, going all the way back to August 2004, where a horse called Exponential had its first run. It was in blinkers and well out of form. Although the next time it appeared, it would be backed extremely heavy as the person behind it was using what they call the Branson effect. They had given the marketplace the slip. The duo behind it was the full-time gambler, Patrick Veach, and the horse's trainer, Stuart Williams. Now these two knew about the horse's potential because they'd been timing it on the gallops away from the track. Although they also knew that the most important factor here was gonna be getting the biggest odds possible to bet on this particular horse. As Veach explains within his book, this was planned meticulously with many people placed around the country in the bookmakers at the right time to place the bet. Those people didn't know what the bet was right until a few minutes before the start of the race where hundreds of bets were placed simultaneously on the horse exponential with prices as big as 100 to 1 backed all the way down to 8 to 1 at the start of the race. Now it's led to believe that on track there was also some bookmakers that took bets at a price of 125 to 1. Exponential went on to run its race, took the lead, two furlongs from the finish and was never challenged. The gamble was landed. It was reported that he picked up around about £500,000 for this betting coup and Veach, as explained within his book, had a thing for targeting specific bookmakers so I suspect Labrokes felt the pain on this one. A great result, although not as good as bet number two where various trainers around the country run four horses on one particular day back in 2014. It wasn't clear at the time but all were linked to Barney Curley after the gamble had unfolded despite the horses running at three different tracks. Now these horses had in particular hadn't been seen in public for between 225 days and 700 days. So they had large prices, the morning prices being Eye of the Tiger, 10 to 1, Seven Summits, 6 to 1, Indus Valley, 20 to 1, and Low Key at 7 to 1. All four horses were gambled heavily into significantly shorter prices at the starting time, but it was too late for the bookies to do anything about this by the time the money had gone on, including some fourfold bets with odds of up to 9,000 to 1. Now, nobody knows exactly how much money was won at the time with this particular gamble, although a Paddy Power spokesperson did say that they'd been hit for over 1 million in what they described as a weapons grade coup. And to be honest, at those odds, it's hard to argue any different. Now, later on, after the matter, Curly admitted being involved in this particular gamble, although it wasn't the first time that something like this had been done, as per the third bet, where D for Dave run in 2010. The horse was running Kilbegan Island, where the horse's owner, Douglas Taylor, had long been plotting its appearance. Now, this was long before the days of advantage betting software, although this was planned with military precision. Because Taylor had planned to have 200 runners in betting shops all around the country where he paid them 30 euros each to place a bet on his behalf. They had an envelope with an instructions and timer five minutes before the race where the timer went off and they were told to place bets on D for Dave at the fixed price that was available. Similar to the previous coups, the horse's price crumbled from 14 to 1 down to 5 to 1 at the starting price and bookmakers were left there with liability as the race went off. Obviously, D for Dave destroyed the field in a seven length victory, leaving the bookmakers with a tail between their legs. Combined winnings were reported to be around about 200,000 euros. Now you could argue that some of these gambles robbed the public as well as the bookmakers, but this particular gamble was nowhere near as devious as the next one, which ultimately resulted in the bookmakers suing the stadium. Because I'm talking about the Dagamon coup that happened in 1964 on the 30th of June. It took place in the 405 Greyhounds race and it was one of the biggest moments in Greyhound betting history because of course betting had become relatively new and they took their prices from the track. This betting coup involved 170 people organized into three different groups which they were calling Operation Sandpaper. The first group placed a combination of early bets on the no hopers within this Greyhounds race to artificially inflate the prices on the other dogs. The second group then sabotaged and blocked the stadium's phone lines to stop the off-course bookmakers passing on information that they were receiving excessive liabilities on the other dogs that were about to be bet. The third group monopolized the tote windows at the stadium, blocked them up, and stopped people from placing bets on the dogs that they really fancied so that the people behind the betting coup could actually back the eventual winner at a hugely inflated price. So for clarity, all of the counter bets that had been placed actually lost, but the masterminds behind the betting coup were left with around 300 winning 
tickets at an inflated price of 9,217 to one. The bookmakers had been fleeced. The winnings were reported around about £600,000 at the time, back in 1964, which is the equivalent to around about 10 million in today's money. Which is of course a similar trick to the seventh betting coup that we're gonna mention in a moment, which was the biggest one in history. But the bookies were really unhappy in this instance, with five bookmaking firms suing the stadium, including William Hill, Coral, and Labrokes. They didn't wanna pay out, so clearly not much has changed since. Now the fifth coup on this list happened in 2006. 16 with the trainer Charles Burns. Three horses were running at Ross Common that day at prices of 16 to 1, 14 to 1, and 12 to 1. By the time the last minute betting was over, those horses' prices stood at 6 to 1, 7 to 4, and the 5 to 4 favourite. Davy Russell rode all three of those horses to victory. He must have been pretty nervous, and the total winnings are actually known, but there was a treble landed at a price of 3,314 to 1. So they must have won big. Irish bookies were furious about this one with greed being well and truly on the other side of the bet. Although it's not as extreme as the next gamble where two punters found a huge opportunity betting on the golf. Because the sixth coup that we're mentioning here is the hole in one gang. It's a unique betting story that unfolded in 1991 where two individuals with a background in the betting industry realized that there was a rare opportunity. They identified a selection of high profile tournaments where golfers were incorrectly priced to have a hole in one. They estimated that the true probability of getting a hole in one at these tournaments from the pros was around about 50%, making it evens in betting terms. However, some smaller independent bookmakers were offering prices of north of 33 to one. They targeted the British, European, and US Open, Volvo PGA, and BNH International, where they managed to secure odds of between 33 and 100 to one, including trebles, doubles, and threefold accumulators, taking their winnings into the hundreds of thousands when they actually landed. Landed. Fortunately, there was at least one hole in one at each of those tournaments, and the total payout was reported to be around about half a million pounds. Adjusted for inflation, that's over one million pounds in today's money, and some of the smaller independent bookmakers actually refused to pay out on this one, shut up shop as a result, and didn't renew their bookmaking licenses. Although it was just a drop in the ocean when you compare it to the seventh betting coup that we're dying to mention here, because this is the biggest coup on the list. I'm talking about, of course, yellow. Sam. It was the largest betting coup in Irish and perhaps even horse racing history, landed by the same person that landed our second betting coup on the list, Barney Curley, where it involved a very average horse called Yellow Sam. Now on the day, the spoils were landed, but not without several significant problems. It netted the equivalent of two million pounds in one day from a tiny 15,000 stake, and it changed how bookmakers operated at the time. Of those that are left in business anyway, now there's a lot more to this particular betting coup because it was a rare mix of cunning, brains, and confidence, as explained in this video here in the end screen where you can see the full story. Check it out, you won't regret it.